the unraveling of Donald Trump Jr.'s business empire. Donald Trump Jr., the firstborn son of ex-president Donald Trump, has lived his entire life in the public eye, but been constantly overshadowed by his father's larger-than-life presence. But behind the huge headlines, intriguing interviews, and MAGA rallies lies a story less glamorous, a man struggling to step out from his father's shadow and experiencing the harsh realities of trying to make a name for himself. Far from the glittering image of success, Trump Jr.'s business and career journey reveals a more complicated reality, one of constant pressure to prove himself in a dynasty where failure isn't an option. So what happens when you're given every privilege in the world and still fail? Childhood and early years of Don Jr., born into a dynasty, but at a cost. Donald Trump Jr. was born into a whirlwind of ambition and controversy. On New Year's Eve in 1977, as baby Don Jr. entered the world, his father, at just 31, was already carving his name into the New York skyline and the city's headlines. Growing up in the Trump household meant Don Jr. was never going to escape the spotlight. He was born into a world of tabloid headlines, grand gestures, and constant deals. Gwenda Blair, a Trump biographer, summed it up. Every waking hour was about getting his name in front of the public. By the time his eldest son arrived, Trump's appetite for spectacle was insatiable. From buying an airline to football stadiums and the world's sixth largest yacht, Trump Sr. was all about what was big and bold, and Don Jr. was born right in the middle of it all. This high-flying lifestyle, however, came with a price. As the Trump brand ballooned, so did the distance between father and son. As the firstborn, Don Jr. felt this absence acutely. At 12 years old, he once yelled at his father, You don't love us. You don't even love yourself. You just love your money. A telling snapshot of the relationship between the two, as recounted by Michael D'Antonio in Never Enough, Donald Trump and the Pursuit of Success. Trump Sr. glossed over these tensions in his book, The Art of the Deal, where he portrayed himself as a playful, if distant, father. I adore them all but I've never been great at playing with toy trucks and dolls," he wrote, recounting how young Donnie would persistently demand his father's attention. Trump Sr. playfully chalked it up to the boy's stubbornness, a trait he claimed Don Jr. inherited from him. But beneath the jokes, there was a hard truth. Don Jr. was growing up in a world where his father's love and attention always competed with Trump Sr.'s endless pursuit of fame and fortune. Don Jr.'s early years were anything but ordinary. Summers were spent far from the glitz of Manhattan, with his maternal grandparents in Czechoslovakia, particularly with his grandfather, Milos Zelnicek, who nurtured a love for hunting and fishing in young Don Jr. Back in New York, he and his siblings were escorted by bodyguards, their lives carefully curated under the Trump brand. It was a strange existence, both insulated and exposed, privileged yet emotionally distant. But Don Jr. may have continued along a relatively normal path for the child of a billionaire, had it not been for a tabloid storm that would change everything, thrust into the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. At age 12, Don Jr. was thrust into the public eye for all the wrong reasons. His father's highly publicized affair with Marla Maples rocked the tabloids, turning the collapse of his parents' marriage into front page fodder. Don Jr. was at an age where he could fully grasp the scandal. His younger siblings, Ivanka and Eric, were largely shielded from the drama, but Don Jr. was left to endure the public humiliation. Even the Trump wealth couldn't shield Donald Jr. from the emotional fallout of his parents' divorce. The impact on the young Donald was profound. He stopped speaking to his father for a year and even refused to attend his wedding to Maples. Soon after, Don Jr. was shipped off to the strict boarding school, Hill School in Pennsylvania, where, by all accounts, he found solace in the regimented lifestyle far from the fishbowl of New York. His escape from home life provided some relief, but it didn't mean escaping his father's long shadow. After high school, Don Jr. followed in his father's footsteps and enrolled in the University of Pennsylvania's prestigious Wharton School of Business. However, after graduating instead of jumping straight into the family empire, he took a detour into the literal wilderness, moving to Aspen, Colorado. There, he worked as a bartender and spent time reconnecting with nature. But the wild years in Aspen weren't just about finding himself, they were also about self-destruction. While working at a bar, Don Jr. developed a serious drinking problem, a time in his life he's acknowledged in many interviews. 
To be fairly candid, I used to drink a lot and party pretty hard, and it wasn't something that I was particularly good at, he admitted in a 2004 interview with New York Magazine. He was arrested for public drunkenness during Mardi Gras in New Orleans and spent a night in jail, a low point in what was becoming a downward spiral. Eventually, Don Jr. decided it was time to grow up. He quit drinking in 2003, moved back to New York, and took his place within the Trump Organization. His first project for the family business involved renovating a Trump building, where he clashed with his father over minor details like decor choices. Don Jr. even joked that the building should be named Trump Jr., a suggestion that didn't sit well with his father. Despite these early clashes, he quickly rose through the ranks and became a prominent face in the company, appearing alongside his father on shows like The Apprentice and judging contestants in his father's Miss USA pageants. But how does a son measure up to a man who built a global empire? For Donald Jr., the pressure was always there, and it would only grow as he got older. Don Jr.'s Business Ventures a trail of broken dreams. Donald Trump Jr.'s foray into the business world outside his father's empire was meant to be his defining moment, a chance to prove he could forge a path on his own. But despite his aspirations, this journey quickly became a tangled web of failures, lawsuits, and family bailouts. At the heart of his struggle was Titan Atlas Manufacturing, a company born from big dreams, but ultimately brought down by mismanagement and misfortune. In 2010, Trump Jr. teamed up with Jeremy Blackburn, an energetic businessman whose track record was already blemished with lawsuits and failed ventures. Together, they promised to transform low-cost housing using prefabricated concrete panels. Their company, Titan Atlas Manufacturing, was marketed as a revolutionary solution to the global housing crisis. The company was supposed to use advanced prefabricated construction technology with equipment capable of producing 3D panels for housing. These panels, reinforced with concrete, were marketed as fire-resistant, durable, and easy to assemble, promising to change the way low-cost housing was built. Backed by the Trump name and significant financing, they convinced world leaders and investors that this was a game-changer. But the vision of building millions of affordable homes quickly morphed into a nightmare. While Titan Atlas talked a big game, the operation itself was far from revolutionary. Problems surfaced almost immediately, Orders were delayed or incomplete, leading to frustration among investors and buyers. A shipment of housing kits sent to Tunisia was called garbage by the buyer, lacking key components like windows, doors, and plumbing. Complaints went unanswered and refunds were out of the question. As one investor recounted, after meeting with Trump Jr. personally to discuss the faulty shipment, Don simply responded, if my father would have been dealing with this, he would have sued you guys a long time ago. Meanwhile, investors like Washington State farmer Lee Eichmeyer, who had put nearly $1 million into the venture, felt betrayed. Eichmeyer, in a lawsuit, claimed that both Donald Trump Jr. and Jeremy Blackburn conspired to deprive him of his investment. As the company's financial woes deepened, Trump Sr. himself had to intervene, eventually purchasing Titan Atlas's debt from Deutsche Bank to avoid default. Eichmeyer accused the Trumps of engaging in a civil conspiracy to sideline his claims and keep the company's assets within family control. The business also promised innovative wind turbines for homes, which soon became another point of contention. When a shipment of wind turbines arrived in Haiti following the devastating earthquake, it was found to have nothing more than a box of unusable parts. Buyers who were counting on these wind turbines to provide power for their homes in an extremely vulnerable time found themselves with junk leading one customer to label the entire deal a scam. Donald Jr.'s struggle to break free from the Trump family's towering legacy became painfully clear as Titan Atlas fell apart. By 2011, the company was buried under mounting debts, including unpaid taxes that resulted in over $100,000 in liens. Worse, shipments meant to showcase their revolutionary housing kits languished on docks due to unpaid freight charges, leading to additional lawsuits. Investors began to lose faith, and the business, once hailed as an innovation, became a glaring example of Don Jr.'s failure. In a desperate move to salvage his son's sinking ship, Donald Trump Sr. intervened with a $1 million bailout, according to tax returns released by the House Ways and Means Committee. While this lifeline kept the company afloat for a while, it couldn't mask the underlying issues that plagued Titan Atlas. Blackburn's mismanagement, coupled with the crushing patent lawsuit against them, sealed the company's fate. In the end, 
even the Trump name couldn't save it. Throughout his independent business ventures, Donald Trump Jr. faced a consistent pattern, ambitious beginnings followed by rapid failures. Lawsuits, unpaid bills, and failed deals seemed to haunt Don Jr.'s attempts to stand on his own. Don Jr.'s Opportunity for Redemption Since Titan Atlas Manufacturing's failure, Donald Jr. decided to diversify and invest in a project involving a failed Navy hospital renovation in South Carolina. The ambitious project planned to turn the building into a social services hub but faced financial mismanagement and ended similarly to Titan Atlas, which ended in bankruptcy and finger-pointing. Despite his efforts, Don Jr. could never fully escape his father's shadow. The Trump name opened doors, attracted investors, and even provided bailouts when needed. But it also came with immense pressure, and Don Jr.'s attempts to replicate his father's success fell flat. Marriages, divorces, and high-profile romances. Donald Jr. proposed to model Vanessa Hayden in 2003, making headlines not just for the engagement, but also for the manner of his proposal. He popped the question in a New Jersey mall as part of a deal with a jeweler who covered the cost of the $100,000 ring in exchange for publicity. Together, they had five children and seemed to have it all. Wealth, a beautiful family, and a high-profile name. But as his business ventures floundered and his political commitments intensified, cracks began to appear. Behind closed doors, Donald Jr.'s personal life was falling apart, just as his business ventures crumbled in the public eye. By 2018, the marriage was over, coinciding with some of his most publicized business failures. After his divorce, Donald Jr. began a relationship with former Fox News host Kimberly Guilfoyle. The relationship, highly publicized, was marked by the couple's joint appearances at rallies and public events. Guilfoyle has been one of his most vocal supporters, standing by him through political and personal ups and downs. But despite her presence, questions linger about the toll his failures have taken on his personal life. From business failures to the crown prince of MAGA. While escaping his father's shadow through his own business ventures failed, Donald Jr. found a new path to success, nestled nicely inside his father's shadow. During the 2016 campaign, he emerged as a key figure in his father's run for the presidency. His sharp, sometimes combative social media presence earned him a loyal following among Trump's base. It was here that Donald Jr. reinvented himself, not as a businessman, but as the crown prince of MAGA. In politics, Donald Jr. found what he couldn't in business, a devoted following, financial success, and an opportunity to thrive all safely within his father's shadow. Donald Jr.'s role in politics grew as he became more outspoken, defending his father at every turn. His transformation from businessman to political firebrand was complete. But as he thrived in this new role, the question remained, would he ever step out of the Trump legacy as a self-made man, or would he always be tethered to his father's name? The future of Donald Trump Jr. With his newfound fame, fortune, and unwavering support from Republican circles in November of 2019, Donald Trump Jr. released a book titled Triggered, How the Left Thrives on Hate and Wants to Silence Us. The Republican National Committee spent $94,800 purchasing copies of the book, which they offered to donors as gifts, boosting party funds, and catapulting the book to the top of bestseller lists. They did the same for the book Liberal Privilege he released the following year, but spent a staggering $303,892.47 on signed copies. Although it's common for political parties to buy books for donor promotions, the amount spent on Trump Jr.'s books far exceeded previous spending, highlighting the party's continued support in him despite his critics. In the end, Donald Trump Jr.'s journey is one of contradictions, born into privilege, but desperate to prove himself. A man who has found success not in business, but in politics within the comfortable confines of his father's shadow. And yet, behind every rally and social media post lies a history of failed ventures, broken promises, and the unshakable presence of his father. For Donald Trump Jr., the fight for his legacy is far from over, but the outcome may already be written in the failures of his past. For more intriguing stories about people you're interested in, click here and subscribe for future videos.